Close your eyes and watch your breath. Hover around the breath. Protect the mind as well. Because lots of things can come in from outside and pull you out, and there are lots of currents inside the mind itself that are just all too happy to go flowing out towards other things. So you've got to protect it, this concentration that you're trying to develop. You can't be like the addict who says, okay, I've given up this thing forever and it's never going to tempt me ever again, and of course five minutes later they're off doing whatever it was. It's because they're careless and complacent. They think that just because they've made up their minds, finally it's not going to happen again. Well, you have to keep up making up your mind if you're going to stay with a breath. Until you get really well established, then you don't have to be quite so active at protecting it. We've got this naga here in the front of the room. Nagas traditionally have seven heads, and they represent the seven factors of awakening. The story goes that the Buddha, after his awakening, was sitting out and meditating, and this huge rainstorm blew up, and so this Naga came up and spread his hood all over him to protect him from the rain and the wind. For seven days he stayed there protecting him, and then when the rainstorm passed, then he uncoiled himself and assumed a human form and bowed down. And the seven heads, of course, represent the seven factors for awakening. Those are the things that protect your mind. It starts with mindfulness, then goes through it analyzing what's going on in the mind, doing your best to get rid of what's unskillful, doing your best to develop what is skillful. And that way you develop the qualities of concentration, the rapture, serenity, concentration, and equanimity. But it's that effort that's what makes the difference. That poor Naga had to stay there for seven days, didn't have a chance to eat. But in putting out the effort, he protected something really important. It's the same with meditation. You put out the effort to keep the mind protected from unskillful qualities, and you find that the effort pays off. That's where the wisdom lies in the path. It's not just in seeing things in a certain way, but you actually act on that wisdom. And the realization you have to act on the wisdom, because that's what saves you, that's what protects you. So keep looking after your meditation while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, while you're going through the day. These qualities of mindfulness and analyzing what's going on in the mind as to what's skillful and not, and then doing your best to give rise to what's skillful. That's what gives the results that we want from meditation.